So when you're out and about here, you soon get recognised as the Lapero, the McCall man, the stupid white man with binoculars. My name is Jenny and I've been with the Ara project for about three years and I'm the vet nurse slash zookeeper here. We're all of one mind here where we have one thing, we want to see these birds survive and put in the wild. And now we've found a team that gels so well together. So lounge, office, kitchen. We've all got the same common interest. We all encourage each other. Alan, come here. Stop fucking hiding. We all, you know, give each other new ideas, new new ways of going about it. Yeah, sure. It's fun. They're a great group of people. They're like your family. Um, you know, this is where we spend Christmases, birthdays. Yeah, it's brilliant. It'd be nice if they did the dishes more often. There are a great many unsung heroes with a project like this people who never come out of the kitchen. So we spend about three hours in the morning just chopping fruit. May I make it? <laughs> and then after I do some cleaning normally in Davis raking. There's always paperwork to do. Checking all the individuals are healthy. And look after them all day, every day. Get up at about five and then you'll start feeding around about six in the morning. Um, and then you just continue right through till about midnight. So that was 13 months without a day off, which gets a little bit tiring. <laughs> Paid? Yeah, yeah. Oh, mate, millions, mate. Bloody millions. Fuck. Got a Ferrari out the back. My food is taken care of. I'm completely voluntary. I don't get paid anything. I, I do get a place to live. Yep, we're basically getting free board. By our, our wages are free board. But how, but how are you actually surviving? Well, um, I live about two years like this, and then I go back to New Zealand and put on a decent amount of weight. My mum feeds me up. Eat some lamb roast and some spuds and it's all good and then I come back here and eat bananas and bird food. Um, due to had habitat fragmentation and nest trees being chopped down, uh, there's only around 300 uh, great green macaws left in Costa Rica which is, which is disastrous really after there used to be thousands and thousands. If nothing was done to alleviate the decline in the greens at the moment, they will be extinct and they estimate in 20 years. Um, but what we're trying to prove is that captive breeding for release, if done properly, with proper protocols, quarantines, getting the right people in place, having the right locations, and not rushing it, that it can be a very useful, important tool for conservation. So right behind me here are the first 10 great green macaws for release in the world ever.